I have these nested arrays, which are pretty hard to follow. It would be nice if both of these files would use dot notation. I have this test that checks if an exception is thrown when the data returned by this endpoint is invalid. So if I run this test, it passes because the commented title key is actually a required parameter and this causes the validator to fail and then the exception is thrown which makes our test pass. What I don't like about these two files is that I have this elegant nice dot notation on one side while on the other side in the test file I have these nested arrays which are pretty hard to follow. It would be nice if both of these files would use dot notation. To do that we could set up an empty array and then set its values using the rr class and the set method that receives the array, then the key in dot notation, in our case items, zero, snippet, and title, and then the value. So if I dine dump this body array and run the test, here is our nested array. Let's continue adding the missing keys. The next one is description. Then we have thumbnails of zero and URL. And then we have player embed HTML. So I'll grab this one and say player embed HTML. And finally, we have content details of duration. If I rerun the test, we can see our entire nested array. Actually, we forgot this published add key, so let's add it here. We'll say now to date time string. Rerun the test, and here it is. Now, with any luck, I should be able to replace this response body with our new array, remove the die and dump, rerun the test, and it fails because we are sending the title key. But once I comment this out, the validator will fail because title is required, and that will make our test pass. Now, all this is a bit too verbose. It would be nice if our API the way we are creating this nested array would look something like this. rr, make, and then pass it an array with the keys and the values we want to set. So we'll grab these from here, paste them in, and then let's fix these. And there we have it. So I would like to be able to create a nested array like this. However, if we open the RR class and search for make, there is no such method. But what we do have is this macroable trait. If you've never heard about this trait before, what it does is it allows us to add additional methods to the class that uses it. In our case, to the RR class. To register a macro for the RR class, we need to call the macro method, pass it the name of the new method we want to add, in our case make, and then a function. Since our desired make method accepts an array as argument, we also need to accept it. So we'll do array RR. Now what we want to do here is to loop through the keys of the array and set the values accordingly. So we can do for each rr as key value, and then to set nested properties on an existing array, as we've seen before, we can use the rr set, pass it the array, let's say result, and then the key and the value. Now this result array doesn't exist, so let's create it. 
and then here return it. Now, with any luck, if we rerun the test, it should still pass. And it does, but just to make sure, let's add title back in. It should fail now because this array represents valid data. And it fails, which means our make method worked as expected. Now, where to register this macro? Typically, I do it directly in the app service provider under the register method. Let's import the RR class. And if somehow things get crowded in here, we can create a dedicated service provider for them. I'll do PHP artisan make provider macros service provider. And then I grab this part, open the new provider, paste it in import the RR class, and then register the provider under the app, the config slash app file, and search for the provider's key. And we can add it right here. Save the file, and then rerun the test, and everything should still pass. And that's it. That's how you can create nested arrays using dot notation in Laravel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Bye.